Now starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today for our Quattro webinar. I am Fred Emery, Vice President of Heartland Campus Solutions. Just a, a few housekeeping items. Uh, we are recording this session and it will be available on our website to view at a later time for, for all of you to view again, or if you want to pass it on, let colleagues know about this, by all means, you could direct them to the website. It should be up on the website within a week. Uh, if you just go to heartlandcampussolutions.com, you'll see an area there for videos and it will be listed in that area. This is a listen only webinar. All attendees are in listen only mode. Um, if you have any questions, by all means, you can ask them. You'll just need to go over to the GoToWebinar control panel. You'll see an area listed as questions. Just type in your questions there and submit them, and we will be able to answer those questions throughout the presentation uh, as well as at the end. We will be allowing time at the end to answer any questions that you may have. Joining me today is Harris Karamanovic. Uh, Harris is one of our senior engineers and um, works on most of our hardware projects, actually on all of our hardware projects, and was instrumental in the design of the Quattro terminal as well as the construction of the software that is on the Quattro terminal. So he's joining us today to um, share some of his insights and talk about the product. So we hope you enjoy this webinar and uh, we'll begin. Just to, just to start though, uh, let's go over the objectives of the webinar. We're going to first start with talking about Heartland, a little bit about Heartland. For those of you that are not familiar with Heartland Campus Solutions, we'll give you a little bit of background of, about the company. We'll then delve into the Quattro hardware. Uh, what have we developed? What have we designed? What are the different components and features and functions of the hardware itself, including the display stand, which is much different than our uh, previous hardware designs that we've done, much different than our DCT2 or 3 terminal. Of course, we'll do a deep dive into the software that's running on the Quattro terminal and then answer any questions. Now, just a little bit about Heartland. Heartland Campus Solutions is, is a division of Heartland Payment Systems. Heartland Payment Systems is one of the leading payment processors in North America. We have over 800 sales professionals and 500 development and security team members and over 700 customer service and operations support. Heartland Payment Systems is a payment processor. We work with restaurants, retail locations to accept, allow them to accept credit and debit cards, as well as process payroll, payroll and, and checks at their locations. We have over 1,600 colleges or universities that we're dealing with from a variety of our product sets, some being one card, others being refund management and um, payroll, as well as processing for tuition and, and what have you. Heartland does process more than 3.3 billion transactions a year, which equals about $122 billion in volume. So our core expertise is transaction processing. We know how to take a card, process it, run a transaction for financial, privilege verification, anything of the sort, do it well and do it secure. That's our core business and we bring that to our, our clients as part of the Campus One Card system. So let's get a little bit into the Quattro terminal. What you see here now on your screen is a photo of Quattro. As you can see, it is a um, touchscreen unit which is different than our terminals in the past. Basically what we've done is we've taken the DCT3 and put it out to pasture. It's uh, it served us well. It's been a great terminal. However, we wanted to create a more flexible device that allows us to be able to develop software that is intuitive, easy to use, touch touch capable, and allows us to make enhancements a lot more efficiently than we could on our previous terminals. And also has a hardware hardware design that um, has a smaller footprint and um, is more intuitive for our clients and easier to 
um, to work with on an installation. So as you can see here, it has the card reader down the side and the touch screen. We'll get into that a little bit more in, in the next few moments. And Harris, feel free to, to jump in and, and uh, give me any comments that you have uh, going through this. I'll uh, be okay. happy to have your, your, your comments and your expertise to share with uh, those that are on the call. Now, the hardware is comprised of a 5.8-inch color touchscreen. We utilize an ARM processor, which uh, is very robust for this terminal. It comes complete with a 32 gigabyte SD card. This is where we have the programming and um, all transaction buffers stored. So uh, in the event that you do have hardware failure and you need to switch out to another device, you can just simply pop out that SD card, pop it into a new piece of hardware, a new Quattro hardware terminal, and uh, all the definitions set up any stored transactions will move over to the new terminal. It does oh, run. If I, can add, if I can add, this is big step comparing to uh, DCT3. Uh, we did have, uh, and DCT2, we did have few cases, couple, not many, but uh, where terminals would uh, run offline for a while. And due to some kind of hardware problem, corruption, uh, we couldn't recover the transactions that were stored. So. In this case, you can just take this SD card uh, that has mini SQL database and uh, either pop this in, put this into a different quattro and upload it that way, or you can open this on your uh, PC using SQL, uh, standalone application that we also offer and uh, research and upload the transactions that way to your database in one file. Great, thanks. Uh, additionally, it's, it is running a version of Windows on the, on the Quattro terminal. It comes complete with a sound player that allows us to, and allows you as a client, to alter the sounds for different functions and transactions. You can adjust what sound you want to hear on a pass or a fail, uh, that type of a situation. So it has a more robust sound player and speakers in, integrated to it. It comes with an integrated magnetic stripe reader, which you may have seen in that picture is on an angle. This allows you to, um, to swipe the card and not, you know, if it's mounted onto a wall to not hit your knuckles. Um, it also can have an external magnetic reader attached to it if, if need be, as well as external contactless terminals such as Prox, MyFair, um, uh, iClass, any external reader that you would like to utilize can attach to the uh, Wigan port that we have. There is an IO port which will allow us to connect to copiers uh, or as well as control access um, locks, magnetic or uh, electric strikes. There is a serial printer port, a USB serial console port which allows us to connect to the terminal for diagnostics and programming as needed, a host and mini USB port so we can attach USB related peripheral devices uh, such as printers and um, barcode scanners or what have you, the Wigan port that I mentioned. It is natively IP. It will run TCP IP native on the board. It will have a Wi-Fi interface. If you choose to run it Wi-Fi, uh, we would attach a, a specific interface to it that just pops right into the, the main circuit board. There's integrated Bluetooth interface, and we've designed the power a lot different where it has an L connector and will come out the back, so it's a lot easier for you to uh, take off or put on the, the power cord to the, the control board that's inside the, um, inside the terminal. Uh, one thing that's not listed here is optionally PoE, power over Ethernet, so uh, it's capable to run using PoE instead of external wall transformer. So if you have PoE on your campus, if you're using that and you prefer, we can use uh, use the Quattro terminal with PoE, so that's, that's perfect for you. Um, Harris, here you, we're showing a, a shot, a picture of the back of the terminal. Um, with, with the cutout so that you can 
put the wires in or, or what have you that you need. Could you explain the different uh, ports that we see here? Let's start with the top right one where my arrow is pointing right yeah. here. Uh, what um, is that one? That would be a second side swipe port. Basically, if you want to use external magnetic card reader, uh, in, in typically in access or in, in any other application, you can use our standard universal reader or uh, Sidewinder reader and plug it into this port that, we, that can be then used parallel at the same time with the integrated uh, reader. Uh, can be used for access to put the, to be put on uh, outside of the door or in maybe lunch line if you want to have a reader that is uh, close to the line itself for students to swipe a card. Next reader below that would be a serial printer uh, port, typically used in uh, financial applications to, for receipt printers. As uh, Fred mentioned, we have optionally a Bluetooth interface that could also be used for wireless Bluetooth connection to the reader. Uh, one port down below where cursor shows now would be a spare serial port. Can be used for different of the different uh, uses for depending on application. In the moment, it's just left there. Uh, one thing that we used this in the past was a serial uh, micro reader, but uh, it, it's kind of optional and depending on what software support. Uh, one below that would be I/O port that is. Uh, interface to any kind of IOs, IO units uh, and access and financial will use our old-fashioned uh, DCT2 IO or we can connect copier IO there or whatever uh, whatever other IO we, we might need. Uh, top would be a USB host port to connect whatever we find need to uh, we'll just add software support uh, as we go. Next below would be a console mini USB port. Basically, that port uses the mini USB to regular USB cable and then connected to computer creates virtual serial port on your host machine. So that way you can, uh, we can do different things uh, for developing and troubleshooting as well as for uh, during the execution there is a bunch of trouble. Uh, troubleshooting messages that are being spit out on the serial port. Green connector is our vegan connector identical to DCT3 and uh, to that we can connect any kind of vegan uh, card readers, uh, smart cards, USB, uh, proc cards, iPads and so on and so on. Uh, next one below would be our TCP connection so that is uh, IP interface, standard IP interface for us to use and computers or as we use on DCT3. Uh, console port left from that one is used for a setting, uh, for, for uh, settings and connecting the host computer also to, uh, since we are running Windows, we can uh, connect that uh, port to your host computer and basically grab the data and files from SD card, load new code, uh, uh, copy the database, to your host computer to recover and so on and so on. And on the left side there is power connector that is typical application. If we use PoE we would remove this connector and then we would put PoE module uh, to cover this, this uh, you can see this circled area. That would be if we use power for, uh, if we power the units uh, as PoE. And Harris what is this uh, little white button next to the uh... But in first, uh, this is picture from first revision of board. This button doesn't exist anymore. Uh, this, is, this was a reset button, but uh, it's not been used. It's removed. So that doesn't exist. Okay, great. Okay, moving along then. Uh, here you can see the stand that we've developed for um, the Quattro terminal. Um, we'll go to a diagram of it and describe the features and functions of it. but. Uh, for those that were at the user group conference, you may have had a chance to pick this up and touch it. It's a very heavy base, uh, much different than our previous terminals, and uh, it has a lot of good features and functions within it as well uh, that allows the, the terminal to 
have a little bit more of a flexible use design. Uh, for example, it has that heavy base, which you can uh, screw right down on a countertop. You can mount it. You'll see here uh, in this diagram, there are holes. These come standard that you can just place screws right into, mount it to a countertop or a desk. Uh, it also will have rubber feet. So if you don't want to mount it and you just want to place it on the counter, um, there are some rubber feet that you can utilize that allows you to run cables uh, from the back of the terminal down through the piping and underneath and out. So this way you don't have to deal with a bunch of messy wires all over the place. They can be um, bundled together, come out through the pipe and underneath and, and back to plug into uh, you know, your network port uh, for power and what have you. The stand does telescope, so you can adjust the height of it, as well as adjust the pitch. Um, there are thumb screws here on the back that you can adjust, which will allow you to uh, change the pitch of the unit. So for, for different operators, you can adjust it accordingly. Um, and you can also rotate it. And you could also rotate it. So uh, up, down, left, right, back, forward. <laughs> um, there's a number of different ways that you can, can set the reader, set the terminal so that it meets the needs of the operator. You know, if you have it next to a cash register in a dining location, you might need it pitched a little differently than if it was um, uh, next to a copier and um, on top of a stand next to a copier. Um, we've designed it so you can route the wires up, as I mentioned, but with this knockout here in the stand and the backing, uh, you simply attach the reader to the to the backing after you've plugged in the wire so it's very easy to manage and to um, install we do have a mount that can be used for a wall uh, it's different than obviously the stand you wouldn't ne necessarily mount this stand to the wall there is a specific mounting that will s offset it from the wall a little bit and allow you to attach it to a, a single gang box so it's a whole lot easier to mount the quattro terminal to the wall than some of our previous terminals. So for laundry use, or if you're using it for access, or um, even no, copier, okay. mounting it to the wall is totally feasible with this device. Uh, we also have a specific bracket. I'm going to go back a couple of, of uh, one shot here. A bracket that mounts right onto the top of the stand, which allows any of the contactless readers from, let's say, um, HID or um, a legion who used to be in the Sol Rand, they've changed their name recently, to attach right to the bracket. So you can use the mini Mullion readers and attach it right to the bracket um, onto the stand and um, accept contactless as well. So that allows you to be flexible into the format of contactless cards you want to use. And we're not tied down to only one style or type. You can use the, all the different card formats that are out there. Okay, moving on to the software. As you mentioned, it is a Windows-based software program. Um, that gives us the flexibility to adjust it and change it over the course of time to add enhancements uh, quite fast and easily. Uh, we have the control then to design the screen however is needed. Um, we do expect after this arrives in our clients' hands that we're going to get some some good feedback. We've gotten continuous feedback through the design stage from a group of clients. However, we do know once we get something into the field and into the hands of of our clients, uh, we'll get even more feedback, and we're looking forward to that to to help even make this a a better product. The first version of software that is being released and has started to ship is our uh, financial software to be used on on the Quattro for debit financial transactions, as well as running meal plans. So the software allows for straight declining balance transactions, meal plans, the use of a guest meal plans. An operator can do a balance inquiry. We have cashier login and logout, so you can track the transactions to a specific cashier. Um, you can manually enter prices. So if uh, you're selling something and it's a dollar or two dollars, you can manually enter in that amount. However, what we've also added is some pre-programmed price keys. These are user-definable per client. 
I believe there are four price keys that can be added onto the screen and you simply can place the amounts in that. So if you're using this at, let's say, a, um, a coffee kiosk or at a barbecue and uh, you have some three or four items that that's all you're selling, you could add those uh, prices pre-programmed onto the screen for, for quick transaction processing. Of course, it'll okay. accept... Uh, those, those pre-programmed uh, prices can be used when you're entering uh, uh, tender amount also. Instead, so you can use them to enter the price of the cost of the of the items, or when you are entering the you know bills like twenty dollar bill bill or something. And and that's that's a great point because in addition to accepting uh, the one card as well as uh, GSB accounts. Um, Credit card is, to, is soon to come within the module that will be released uh, in, a, in a future version. But right now, in addition to one card and GSB transactions, you could also use this to accept cash and have a cash drawer attached. Of course, right. you can do refunds. The cashier can do refunds as allowed. Um, you can set up sub cashiers or servers, um, do tip transactions. Let's say this is being utilized at an off campus location that does pizza delivery, for example and the serve the delivery person received a tip of three dollars that could be entered into uh, the quattro terminal and tracked accordingly of course you could print receipts and save receipts for reprinting all receipts are stored in the in the software and the cashier or operator can go in and review previous receipts and print them you'll receive cumulative as well as shift and server totals it does support pin transactions will run online and offline. If you happen to lose network connectivity, it will immediately switch to offline transaction processing and then switch back to online once you restore network connectivity. As we mentioned, all the programming is on the SD card, so it's it's hot swappable to another terminal. If you happen to have a uh, total hardware failure, um, say somebody spilled a large coffee on it and uh, you started having issues with the with the hardware uh, you then could just move it over to a this sd card over to a new terminal and of course you have multiple menus within the um, for the programming of the terminal so let's get right into the actual software and show you how it works and, and operates The, the terminal here, and, and Harris, feel free to um, describe anything that you would like. But as you can see here, we, we took actual shots of the screen on the terminal so you would see how it would look to a user. Instead of doing screenshots off of a computer, uh, we decided to do actual photos from the, from the terminal so you can really see how it looks um, to an operator, to a, to a student. And you'll see here on the right-hand side, you have a guest, trans, guest meal plan key account for manually entering in an account, a discount key, an inquiry key, the tip, refund, cashier, login in and out, as well as getting into the setup of the terminal. Of course, going into the setup, um, you would require a specific um, passcode to enter into that, that programming. So not anyone could just do it, of course. Uh, you have your Before keypad here. here. Uh, uh idea behind that is first it is two things first it is dynamically so some of these uh, functional keys will change the meaning and change the script on it as you go through processing so for example tip can become uh, discount can become bill type if you uh, on that uh, place in, in uh, entering the transaction the other thing to kind of toss in is uh, you know when button is uh, Active, it is painted red, like we have here, cashier in out is active. That means the cashier has been logged in. So it's pretty, you know, straightforward, self-explanatory. You click one key, it is active, and then you can enter. For example, if you click inquiry, it will prompt you to swipe a card or enter account number, and the uh, inquiry key will be highlighted, like, uh, like the cashier is right now. So uh, following that logic, it's pretty easy to, to do pretty much everything that we uh, have, uh, that we, all, all the features that we had supported in this T3 and then some. So. 
Go ahead, Fred. Uh, of course, you have the keypad here on the left, and these are those quick price keys that we mentioned. Uh, Harris has defined a few as an example on here, and these are totally user definable, so you can change it as your needs uh, change. And it's easy just go into to the terminal configuration and adjust, and uh, it'll appear different. It'll change it on the screen immediately. You step in one card and download it to the terminal. Um, you're back, your enter key, and you're clear. So moving right along, when you enter an account or swipe it, of course, you would see the account number would appear right up here. Where set it, the terminal is set right now to vendor meal plan. As you can see here, it says at the top of vendor meal plan. It's showing the account. It's processing that transaction. Uh, you would receive your pass or your fail. And of course, this is showing uh, meals left for that account. We're really generous in our test <laughs> environment. And this card account that we did, the 980706001, has 9,841 meals left. You probably yeah, won't see that card. on your students. Yeah, that's Harris's <laughs> card. So Harris can eat a whole lot. Uh, yeah. Uh, within the test system. At this moment, when you get pass or fail, you'll get different sounds uh, uh, played, and uh, those sound, fi sound files are stored in our sounds folder and so on SD card. So if somebody doesn't like those sounds, you can just replace them with a new file and uh, just keep the same name of the file for OK or fail. There are a couple more that I used though. Go ahead, Ben. When you enter in amounts, of course, you could just enter in a single amount. Let's say you know you're ringing up um, that person's transaction. And it's a five dollar meal. You can just hit five dollars. Perhaps you're doing individual items. So you, if that's the case, then you can add them together for a cumulative total. So here you'll see two twenty, three fifty three for a total of five seventy three. Um, as you can see here, the receipt key is red. Um, and the receipt key popped up. So in the past, it wasn't there. You're now doing a transaction, a financial transaction, where someone may want a receipt. So that key will change. And as you can see, this changed to bill type. So for a financial transaction entry, where you might want to change our bill type, which allows the, which tells the terminal how to flow the transaction, where to pull money from, what balance in one card, and what general ledger account to put the revenue transaction funds into, um, that appears there so you can adjust it as needed um, within the terminal. You would simply swipe the card to process the transaction. And as you can see or here... If, if in that point, or if you if cash is allowed, then you can just click on cash and enter the tender amount, which will show over there also. Right, so here is the cash key. Here's a voucher key uh, for a non-tax voucher, um, IOU type of a situation, perhaps. Yeah. Um, you have your discount. Voucher can be taxed or non-tax. When you click voucher, there will be another button by below receipt that will say taxed or not, pre tax or, or after tax. So this does allow us to alter the screen as needed for the different functions that you're doing, uh, and it appear how it needs to with the with the functions that are needed for that exact transaction. So you see here it's it's processed and it returned the balance of $33.99. Okay, what we're gonna do now is move into the configuration on the terminal. Um, as, as Harris said, all the configuration can be downloaded from the network. So when you log in, when you bring this onto the network and you establish its node address here in the network tab uh, and the network manager IP address and its cluster, it will download all the programming to it. But if you needed to make any changes, you're able to right here on the terminal as well. So Harris, would you like to describe what we're seeing here under the configuration tab for, for network? All these parameters are downloaded. Once on uh, this tab are actually manually entered because that uh, creates, uh, creates the connection to network manager. But the rest of the fields here uh, will be downloaded and, uh, and also can be edited here and stored. So uh, node address, node goes between 1 and 249. Uh, standard, that's all other, uh, our node. This is uh, obviously the CCP. Uh, connection to the network manager, so we can enter uh, IP address if you use static IP, 
uh, and enter host IP address, that would be address of network manager, network mask, and socket, definitely uh, same thing as we had before. If we want to use DHCP, we'll leave the my IP uh, fields all zeros. In that case, we need to specify the cluster uh, name, H5 in, my, in this case, and um, that will let uh, DCT connect to the network manager and uh, establish connection download, download configuration. So network is kind of just uh, what you uh, load, what you populate manually first time in order to connect to network manager. And after that, all these other uh, tabs that we have here uh, will actually get populated once connection is established to network ma to one card. Next tab would be setup, I think. Yep. This are all the global parameters that we have. Uh, it's very similar to setup uh, tab on uh, node settings in one card. So we have customer number, whether card is required for manual account entry is uh, allowed, uh, whether the special fields are allowed, so that means the balance check, whether terminal is configured, configured or allowed to work offline, and in that case, uh, whether to use account list or not. In that case, we can auto add to account list once you have online passes. In offline mode, uh, maximal per account or maximal per transaction are the options, and maximal amount for offline operation in either case. In this case, it's 100 bucks. Whether external swipe is used, and if it is, in that case, we have small LEDs and second size swipes, so how long will those LEDs flash for pass and fail? Uh, whether prox reader is enabled, beep on pass basically enabled, enables sound. It's not beep in this case, but uh, we have the name same as we had in uh, you know all terminals for, for compatibility reasons. Uh, pin number, whether to be used and whether to purchase GSB uh, uh, transactions. In that case, we can have up to 16 different GSB uh, bin numbers, basically first six digits of GSB account that are populated here. Next uh, slide would show card format, I think, Fred. Yep, there correct. Go. It's very similar to what we have in one card. Um, we have one card, uh, uh, nine digits, which can be uh, ABA, or if it's uh, disabled, then it's exclusively uh, proprietary nine digits. Then we have ABA ISO, uh, custom and smart format, prox account number format also, pretty standard stuff that you guys are all familiar from our other terminals. Account tab will let you see all the accounts that are in a local database to be used uh, for offline processing. We can here add accounts by swiping cards or manually entering. We can scroll through account list, we can delete Singular account, single account that is highlighted or completely. Buffers uh, page. Here is something, uh, this is something new that we added uh, as opposed to this T3 or previous terminals. Here you can see actually complete transactions. Uh, you can see uh, timestamp, account number, transaction type, and if it's financial transaction of any kind, you can see the uh, amounts that are in question, uh, total, total tax, cancelable, non-cancelable. If we scroll to the right with this bar on the bottom, you can see all the fields that are part of transaction. Now, new thing is that the uh, checkbox on the left, bottom left side, see all buffers. If this is unchecked, it will list only transactions that are done offline and waiting to be uploaded to Network Manager. If we check this checkbox, then we will see all transactions that are done, they, uh, online or offline. There is flag on the right side that, where you can see that transaction was done online or offline, and whether transaction is uh, uploaded or still waiting to be uploaded to Network Manager. So this is one new feature that we added because we have uh, this SD card that has lots of space, so we figured why the heck not. Um, access keys would be set uh, based on your uh, preferences. Uh, register tab is kind of similar to what we have on financial tab on uh, node settings. 
all financial parameters financial parameters of the terminals are set here like tax minimal tax tax mode tax percentage and as you can see this uh, four uh, pre-configured uh, pre-configured prices that you can see on the keypad they are also populated here also we configure here whether to use credit cards whether to use servers whether uh, a lot negative transactions are allowed a cash transaction um, credit cards, discounts, uh, vouchers, and so on and so on. So all these financial, financial parameters are configured here on this page. And last tab we have here in configuration is actually setting up the receipt, what to show on receipt, what to print in header, footer, bold rate of cost, how many lines to skip, and what to show in the receipt itself, whether to show account number, pure or mass, whether to show remaining balance, discount, whether to print two receipts, copies, instead of one, and uh, some, some printers uh, do need uh, command for, do have command for cut paper, so that can be configured here. This would be a manager menu. Uh, we have three tabs here. First tab would be cashier that is not shown here. That's basically where you can add, delete, and populate cashier list and edit to that. That can be also populated and downloaded from one card, of course. Cashier log is showing all totals for that ship. Of course, we can see see here accounts for the cashier that was used, start of the ship, down on the bottom is end of ship, timestamp, and the totals for different kind of categories. So cash, taxes, uh, one card, uh, credit card, it used, GSD card, all totals kind of uh, broken down per category. And we can we have another batch tab where we can uh, force closing batch. Uh, this is a picture screen of a readout menu, a readout uh, code and readout menu where we can see uh, cumulative totals for cash, one card, tax, bank card, GSD, and uh, vouchers. Uh, second tab on this same menu is print receipts. And that is basically where we can go in and see all the old receipts or actually receipts from current ship. Uh, and you can review them and also print them. Mm, that's it as for menus, I think. So uh, as you can see, I mean, in my opinion, there's a whole lot more functionality in this than we've had in the, uh, the DCTs of, of past. Um, and it, it allows for a lot more flexibility and uh, being on this platform will allow the engineering team to make changes and enhancements and updates to the software a whole lot uh, quicker, it allows us to have a greater flexibility and control of uh, the design and the, the, the screen of what keys are on it. Um, so it's a lot more flexible and, and fast for us to add new keys as we get requests from you all and, and we see needs arise and change it dynamically. So an operator um, doesn't have to remember what that F1 key does or what have you or hit something two times or, or whatnot. It's right there on the screen for them. Uh, so we'll go to questions now. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in and um, we'll, we'll go through them and answer them uh, to the best that we can. Uh, one question was regarding the version of Windows, um, and if I'm correct, Harris, we're using a a, a specialized web version of Windows that's Windows CE, that's Windows embedded, and uh, we are running the Compact Framework 3.5, and that allows us to strip out a lot of the standard Windows functionality that might be in there that's not needed to really nail it down and secure it to the terminals um, that isn't right. uh, available in, in some other versions of, of Windows. It's it's used quite often in terminals like this so that we have total right. control over it. And uh, Right. It's kind of nice nice mix between needs and, and uh, you know, resources that you need to put in. So it's not full-blown Windows 7 or Windows 8, but it is... Uh, uh, big and uh, good enough for uh, this kind of mini kind of terminal. Still giving us the lots of perks that Windows are carrying, so we can take this SD card plug in, in your laptop and, and you can research database, you can check uh, software, update software. Of course, we can download the software updates.
was a two one card, same way as we did on this C3. So there are lots of and lots of uh, different ways on on and, and different uh, options and features that uh, we now can add, uh, given that we have so flexible and so powerful hardware behind. Another question that came in is, often we need to use one of these where there is no power or internet. Um, I heard it would work all offline, however, power would be an issue, correct? Uh, we now have an old DCT3 that we use a portable battery with. How would this work with on the Quattro? My personal okay. recommendation is that you would utilize one of our, our, our mobile terminals, such as M-Authenticate for that function, and, and not necessarily use the Quattro. However, if it's your only your you really wanted to use the Quattro as opposed to the DCT3, um, Harris, they could run it offline and do the same thing with attaching it to a battery that's backup, correct. correct? And as for that, yeah, that's right. And as for uh, battery consumption, current here is about 20% uh, uh, of what we need current wise on DCT3. So the same battery would probably let us run about five times. We also have terminal, uh, some kind of uh, backlight uh, power saving mode. So that can be uh, set up so that uh, if not, the touch screen is not used for about whatever you set for, I think we set it for two minutes, the backlight will get a little bit dimmer that will save on, on uh, battery life also in that case. Uh, I would recommend though if you have that scenario where you have no power, no internet, that you use um, our M Authenticate uh, that has now been adjusted. I believe, believe Drafto has made adjustments uh, to that product also that will allow for offline processing too. So um, that might be a better solution because you can just pull out an iPhone or an iPad or whatnot and run that application. And if you do get mobile sig signal, you can connect on that. But, it, uh, but that is an option as well, uh, just as this. Um, Next question is, can this be configured to automatically discount from drawing when drawing from a specific balance, such as declining balance meal plan? Uh, so, um, Harris, will this do yeah, the automatic well, discount? That is part can be done, that, that can be done in one card. So, yes, answer is yes. We just uh, configure it that way. And one card is powerful enough to do that as far as I remember. Okay. So yes, you can do that. It'll automatically discount from when drawing from a specific balance. Um, and next question was related to pricing. Um, what I would recommend you doing is touching base with your uh, sales representative to get exact pricing. But what I can say is that it is in and around the same as the DCT3. It's slightly above the price of the DCT3. Um, but I would recommend that you contact your, your sales representative to uh, review your needs and go over uh, quantity uh, to see if there are any quantity discounts that are available for you at this time. Um, are there any other questions that, oh, yep, here we go. Here's some more. Um, are the daily totals printable? Daily totals? Uh... Well, yeah, uh, at the moment where you log cashier out, so shift totals, I guess that's what they mean. Uh, the moment you uh, log cashier out, it will offer you to print uh, those shift totals. However, you can also review them if you don't have printer or if you don't want to print them, you can always review them. Okay. Even after shift, I mean, we keep the totals for shift. Uh, we can keep uh, way more totals since we have this bigger memory. So you can go and uh, back and see shift totals for uh, quite a few backs back, uh, days back. Okay. Um, next and question. By was... the way, everything that is printed, it's also stored on SD card as text file. So uh, if you don't print the totals, you can always pull them off in uh, text file form. Uh, of the uh, SD card. OK, next question was, will there be a function in one card to extract PO, POS layouts from a full stealth POS setup to use in mini mode on a Quattro? I use layout elements from a POS setup, setup for a Quattro setup. As of right uh, now, no. Um, that might be something that will be added later. We are doing work with a couple of different tablet options for POSs that could run uh, 
your standard POS um, on a tablet. So that might be a better option for you if it's an immediate need. Uh, however, there are, you know, right now it's not pulling full POS setup to run in a mini mode on the Quattro. Just um, to explain, this is version that is kind of still working and talking through network managers, so we are somewhat limited with uh, protocol and packet size on what we can download from one card. Uh, I, I, in in couple months, I'll start working on version that will work to uh, web service and. Um, at that point, I'll see uh, there will be probably way, way more things, uh, may, more, many more things that uh, I can add through software to be downloaded from one card. So that is one of the things to, uh, as, as for POS layout, I'll look into even that I cannot guarantee it will be doable. But we'll definitely consider it. Right. I do know that there's been conversations about that. So it is something that we're considering. Um, we do have some other tablet options, but that is something that I think is because uh, we've had a couple of folks ask about that, and it seems like that would be a natural progression uh, from from a client side is to want to utilize that on the Quattro. So uh, that does need to be investigated, as, as Harris said, and see what we can get down to this terminal uh, and, and have it run. Um, um, To Let talk see, in, at the moment, we have a software for financial application that we uh, discussed here we, uh, that is released. We also have a laundry application that is being tested and access application that is being prepared right now. It will probably come out with the copier version that will work the same way through network manager and before we start working on this web access uh, um, another question was just confirming that it would be a cool platform for a mini POS, and, and we are looking into that uh, to see the feasibility. Um, uh, Deb Turner, uh, I, I will follow up with you on, on that answer for Bluffton um, regarding the M Authenticate. Not a problem. I will follow up with that and, and in relation to Quattro uh, that you asked. So I'll, I'll follow up with you on that. Um, are there any other questions? So right now, uh, that's all that I have in here at the moment. So I'll give you another moment or two to ask questions. Um, I hope you, you see the, the, the difference and how much we work we put into creating the Quattro terminal as opposed to the, you know, where we've gone from when we were using the DCT3 to now with the Quattro. Um, it's a, in my opinion, a much more attractive looking terminal, uh, much more robust, has a it's definitely better looking, uh, more attractive terminal, but much more robust and flexible. And uh, the features that are in it are definitely beyond what we had in the, in the DCT3. So it should be easier for your, uh, your operators to utilize, easier for your students to utilize, self-serve on, kiosks on, on, on copiers and whatnot, uh, and it will, will be a great tool for, for your campus and enhancement to, you, to your one card system uh, and upgrades from, from older terminals that you have out there. Uh, there's still a number of clients that are running terminals previous to the DCT3, and this will be a great update for you uh, to move over to the Quattro. They are shipping now, so if you'd like to place orders, just let us know. If you have any other questions that... Um, you think of later on, by all means, just feel free to email me. You should see my email address on your screen or, or give us a call, and we'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, there are no other questions that, that have come in. Uh, so with that, I'm going to thank you all for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you on future webinars. We have a complete list on our website of webinars throughout this semester, and you will be receiving invitations from us to attend to attend those webinars as well. Uh, attend as many as you like, there's no limit. This, as I mentioned earlier, is being recorded and should be up on our website for your review uh, within a week. Thank you again, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you, Harris, for joining us too. Sure. Bye.